to our scholarship workshop. We're going to talk a little bit about Gates, the Gates Scholars Book, a million program, and we're going to talk a little bit about some scholarship. Good. All right, so I'm not going to do it for you all. I'm going to bring up Dr. Frank, have you listen to Brickfield, and she's going to share with you everything you need to know about the Gates Scholarship. All right? Greetings, greetings, greetings. All right. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go over what types of scholarships are out there for you. Um, first, I want to touch on academic scholarships. So there are two basic academic scholarships. You can earn an academic scholarship through your GPA or through your test score, OK? So what is one of the most popular academic scholarships in the state of Georgia? Oh, oh right. It's kind of automatic. As long as you have a GPA that they want you to have, um, you can get that scholarship, as well as the Zell Miller Scholarship. And I'm going to touch on both of those briefly. Um, also, with the test scores, I want to show you a couple of things about that. All right. So this is a sample of Georgia State University. They have scholarships, um, along with several other schools, where you can get a scholarship based on your test score. All right. So the highest one that they have is the second century. If you have a 1250 SAT, and throughout the presentation when I say SAT, I'm only basing this on quick reading and math. It does not include your writing score, okay? So that's about a 625 reading, 625 math score. And if you get a 28 on the ACT, you have a 3.5. 3.5 is going to be about a 90 average or better, okay? Then you can get a $3,000 renewable scholarship. Renewable means that you can get it every year, you know, as long as you maintain the grades throughout your college experience. And as you see, it has the different um, test scores. As long as you have that 90 or 8 average, whatever test score you have, then they give between $500 and $3,000. Okay. And I'm going to show you a list later of a variety of different schools that, um, I mean, a lot of different schools do that. Uh, SCAD, the students in here that are students are interested in graphic arts and fashion, okay? The Vanna College of Art Design does the same thing. If you have a 27 or better GPA, you qualify for their presidential scholarship. And there are a lot of different universities out there. Um, and you, based on what you want to major in, you want to research the school. And the school typically has a financial aid tab on the website of all the colleges and universities. Go to that tab or find that on the college that you're interested in. Look and see what type of scholarships they offer based on test scores. As far as academics, in the state of Georgia, as I mentioned, Hope Scholarship um, is awarded to any student that you have to be a U.S. citizen, of course, or have a, a green card, um, be a resident here. And you have to maintain an 85 core GPA. Now, core GPA only includes English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language classes. So your elective classes like your PE, your psychology, your team sports, ethics, those classes do not count in your whole GPA. They have to be major classes or core classes. All right? So they take that, as long as you have an 85 or better, you also have to meet rigor requirements. This is new this year. Well, it started last year with the class of 2015. So they're making it harder and harder for you to get the whole scholarship. So with the class of 2016, they're required to have three rigor requirements, okay? And they have a long list of those things that you can meet. Most of you will meet that because you'll be taking a pre-calculus class, so there's a math requirement. As long as you're taking pre-cal, AP-cal, AP statistics, those classes are all considered to be rigorous mathematics courses. If you had chemistry in, in high school during your four years, that's a rigor requirement for science. Um, if you've taken a second foreign language or a third foreign language, it's also a rigor requirement. So most of you all that are on the college prep track are going to have those classes anyway, so you have the rigor. Also, if you've taken an AP class or if you're in an IB program, all those are considered rigor. So basically, the colleges want to make sure that you have taken rigorous courses um, to get that whole scholarship. So as long as you meet the rigor requirement, um, if you go to a public school in the state of Georgia, they're going to pay about 85% of your tuition. Okay. If you go to a private school, of course, private schools are a lot more expensive. They don't pay that much of your tuition, but they will give you um, some money towards your tuition. Um, and there's no SAT requirement or ACT requirement for the HOPE, except, of course, you have to meet the minimum 
ACT and SAT to get into that college. In the state of Georgia, the minimum ACT is a 17 composite, 17 English, 17 math, and the SAT requirement is a 430 on the reading and a 400 on the math. That's in Georgia. Now, Alabama and Mississippi will actually take a 16 on the ACT. So that's something else. I know a lot of my students are great academic students, but they don't test well. So if they make a 16, look at some schools in Alabama and uh, Mississippi. All right. So the Zell Miller, now the, what's the difference between the two? The Zell Miller has a higher GPA requirement. You have to actually have a 3.7, which is about a 92 academic average. You also have to meet the same rate requirements, but there is an SAT requirement for the Zell Miller, because the Zell Miller pays more. They're going to pay 100% of your tuition if you go to a public school. And public schools are like Georgia State, Auburn State, Savannah State, Kennesaw State, Auburn School, the state in the name of it, those are all state schools, okay? Or public schools. You also have to have at least a 26 composite on your ACT. So that will give you the Zell Miller scholarship, okay? Now, in college, once you actually get to college, you have to maintain your grade in order to keep that scholarship. So after every 30 hours, typically a student will take 15 hours per semester. So at the end of 30 hours, at the end of your freshman year, end of your sophomore year, end of your junior year in college, they're going to look at your grade. They're going to pull your GPA. So as long as you maintain a 3.0 in college, and they will pay for this up to 127 hours. So basically that's, you know, over a four-year period, um, as long as you have maintained a 3.0, you can keep the whole scholarship throughout. For the Zell Miller, you have to keep a 3.3. Okay, so it's a little bit higher. So those are our academic scholarships. And there are many scholarships that have GPA requirements. I'm just going to touch on those two. Um, so a lot of my students will say, the reason I have up there, Val and Sal, I just want to say that some of the schools also like Texas University of Georgia, they will automatically accept the valedictorian and salutatorian of each high school in the state of Georgia as long as they meet the minimum SAT or ACT requirement. So that's good to know also. Your guidance counselor will submit probably around January, February, once your valedictorian and salutatorian is announced. But you do have to apply. You still have to fill out an application. So if you know you're going to be number one or number two in your class, and you're interested in UGA, go ahead and you know, fill out that application. As long as you have the minimum, that's kind of an automatic acceptance. Also, a lot of my students say, well, my parents make too much. They make too much money for me to get a scholarship. Do I still have to fill out the FAFSA? Yes, you still have to fill out the FAFSA. Every single senior in January needs to fill out the FAFSA form. Some students say, well, why can't I fill it out now? But your parents have not received the W-2 forms yet. And your parents have to fill out a portion of that scholarship, I mean, the FAFSA um, application. They have to put what their income is. Based on your family's income, then that's how the government kind of decides, okay, well, this is how much your family can contribute. It may be zero. It may be the full amount. So it, it varies. Um, and a lot of times it depends on, they not only look at your financial income, they also look at how many people are in your household. They also look at how many people are in college in your household. So they take all of that into account. I tell some students, you can get a Pell Grant. A Pell Grant is something that you don't have to pay back. It's, a lot of students get that once they fill their FAFSA out. And that Pell Grant, some families can make over fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, but that family may have three or four students, and two of them may be in college. So it just depends. There are a lot of factors that go into whether or not your student is Pell eligible. Some students say, well, if I don't have to earn this much, I might not be Pell eligible. You still need to fill out the FAFSA. Because there is no separate HOPE application. A lot of my students ask that also. Do I have to fill something out to get the HOPE? No. You have to fill out the FAFSA. And as long as you fill your FAFSA out, and once you graduate, your counselor is going to send your GPA, verify your GPA, and your college is going to receive that. Okay? So that's how that works. So now I want to talk about athletic scholarships. Are there any athletes in the house? Got some athletes? Okay, cool. All right, so for the athletes, if you want to go to a Division I or a Division II school, those are those big universities, okay, you are going to have to fill out the NCAA clearinghouse if you want to play in college and if you want to be considered for athletic scholarship, okay? So make sure you fill out your NCAA it's eligibilitycenter.net, and we're going to put all this on our um, website. I'll have something so you can access that. Um, but again, it's eligibilitycenter.net. 
document that is for the, uh, the clearinghouse for a Division I school. If you want to go to a Division III or four school and play, then you'll do the NAIA. And your coaches should be telling you all this information, okay? So if you're a senior, make sure you touch base with your coach. Um, I know a lot of the fall sports are, you know, you're still in that season, but after you fall, you know, in January, you definitely need to touch base with your coach and ask them to help you through the clearinghouse. A lot of times, um, the, your guidance counselor is going to help you with local scholarships. They'll help you find ac academic scholarships, but I can't help my students necessarily get athletic scholarships because the coach at my school has a tie to the coach at the college. So they bring in a lot of college coaches. And you as a parent can do that as well. If you have video footage of your student and your coach might not be advocating for you, um, then by all means, you can contact that school and um, when you go on a visit, talk to the coaches in your student sport. But most times, if your coach at the high school level will have a connection with that college coach and be giving footage to them, your video footage, and giving them your stats. And that's how a lot of times you would negotiate and on signing day, that's how most of our athletes would get their scholarships. Okay? All right. So, Merit, as I mentioned, Pell Grant. The Pell Grant is also automatic. Once you fill out your tax form, based on your income, you may get anywhere between $500 to $5,775. That is the max amount of Pell money that you can get. And you can get that on a yearly basis um, just because every single year you have to fill out your FAFSA. Okay, it wouldn't be when you're in college. Every January you fill your FAFSA out. All right. Um, and of course, Gates is a married, and I'm going to talk about Gates in a minute. Local scholarships. So I work in Newton County, and in Newton, our local scholarships come out in January. So local scholarships are those local sororities and fraternities, like Say for instance, us at Stone Mountain Lithonia, we give out scholarships every year. We typically give out about $20,000 a year. We gave out, I want to say, 22 scholarships last year to students in our service area, which is DeKalb and Rockdale and um, Gwinnett. So if you're in that service area or you go to a school in that service area or reside in that service area, of course, you can apply for the Stone Mountain Lithonia alumni chapter scholarship. And we accept females and males. A lot of boys say, well, I can't, you know, I can join a sorority, so, but you can't apply for the scholarship, okay? <laughs> a lot of fraternities, however, only will give to male students, but you have to do your research. So look at some of the fraternities, sororities, and again, ask your guidance counselors for the list of local scholarships. Another scholarship, I want to say Snap and Show serves DeKalb County. Have y'all heard of Snap and Show? Okay. It's an electric company. I know it services Newton County, and I think Rockdale, and a little bit of Henry. They offer a scholarship, and it's a pretty good scholarship. It's like twenty-five hundred dollars for that year. And a lot of the local scholarships, however, are not renewable. They're only one year. Um, our hospital, our local hospital, Newton, is changed its name. Piedmont Newton Hospital offers scholarships for students that want to go into radiology and nursing and um, ultrasound tech. So they give a, a pretty good two thousand dollars scholarship. So the local scholarships are going to be anywhere between two hundred fifty. To 2500 but every little bit helps, right? That $2,500 might pay for some books, okay? Or lab code or something, okay? All right, so definitely when that comes out, look at your local um, scholarships. And I ask students too, ask your church, if you attend a church, does your church give a scholarship? If they don't, you might be the first senior to graduate from that particular church. And maybe a new church, ask the pastor, you have a reputation, you know? Give me a scholarship. Ask your doctor if you know you want to go up be a pediatrician. Ask your dentist, because you never know. Ask your state farm agent. Who knows? Just ask those people in your local area. You know, because a lot of times they have to do some tax write-offs and they're able to donate, you know, two hundred fifty, five hundred dollars or more to um, their patient or to their clients. So think about that as well. All right. Okay, so how many students in here are performers? Where are my singers and my artists? Okay, I see you guys. All right, my actors. All right, so for performance schools, of course, when you get ready to try to apply and apply for scholarships, a lot of times it's known that you do have to prepare um, an audition piece. So if you're an artist, you're going to have your portfolio together. It may be electronic or digital, or you may have paintings or sketches that you have. Um, also, if you're an actress, you may need to prepare a monologue. So just know that it's 
especially for those specialty schools like AMDA, um, the College of Arts up in Pennsylvania, um, Savannah College of Art and Design, Art Institute of Atlanta, and uh, many of the performing arts schools, um, you definitely do have to do auditions. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I, I, did anyone here want to be a chef? Do I have any culinary arts students? No? Nobody wants to cook? Okay. I was going to tell you about a scholarship. Well, if you have any friends that want to go into culinary arts, let them know there's a competition uh, sponsored by the Art Institute of Atlanta. It's called the Best Chef Competition. Okay? And you have to prepare a meal and design your own restaurant, and you're able to get a half tuition scholarship or a full scholarship. It's a national scholarship. All right. Also, once you become a freshman, a lot of the colleges will open up scholarships for their freshmen. So at the end of your freshman year, also look at your financial aid office and ask your financial aid counselor at your college, once you get to college, to give you information about the scholarships that are only for current college students. So just because you're in high school, after high school doesn't mean you still can't apply. Even with Gates, if you apply for Gates your senior year, you don't get it, you still can apply for it your freshman year. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. And the last scholarships are just scholarships based on leadership and community service. So where are my 11th graders again? Let me see 11th graders, okay. So I want you to write down posse, okay? And I'm gonna go in depth about posse in a minute, but posse, you have to be nominated your 11th grade year. So that's why I want the 11th graders to listen up when I start talking about posse. All right, and the Prudential Spirit Scholarship is for a student who has a lot of community service. I know some counties don't require students to have community service anymore to graduate, but I, I'm from Newton County, we don't really require that. I think Atlanta Public Schools, they still require it. So some of you may have a lot of community service. So if you have lots of hours, look at the Prudential Spirit um, Community Service Scholarship as well. Okay, so this is more so for the parents. It's for the students too. But parents, I just kind of want to give you an idea of what it costs, okay? So I have a variety of different schools listed. Harvard University is an Ivy League school. Ivy League schools are the eight um, of the oldest schools that are in the United States. Um, and Harvard is always pretty, uh, ranked pretty high above Yale and Princeton. So their tuition is $38,000. Now what does tuition pay for? Tuition basically pays for your instructors, your professors, um, and it just pays for the amount of credits that you have, that's how much you have to pay for tuition, okay, that, that allows you to go to school. It's kind of like if you attended a private high school, you do have to pay a tuition every year, okay, and that helps out with the cost for your teachers. All right, so what are the other stuff? You see, Harvard's 38000 but then there's the other price, that 58000 So that is the matriculation cost. Matriculation includes your housing, your dormitory fees, where you're going to live, your food, it includes transportation costs, um, it includes your books. So all of those are matriculation costs. The cost for you to go to a football game at the college, a cost for you to use the computer at the computer lab at the college, a cost for you to go to the intramural game at the gym or to use the gym. All those are matriculation costs, okay? So that's that big number over there. That includes a lot. All right. So, Emory University is one of the most expensive schools in the state of Georgia. It is a private school, but they have great programs. They have a school of law, they have a school of medicine, and a great school of business. <clears throat> so, of course, with Harvard and Emory, because they're very selective, they can kind of be pricey. Selective meaning that those students that attend those schools do have to have high GPA and typically very high test scores as well, okay? So then you have University of Georgia, go dogs. All right, so that's where I went, and the cost wasn't that much when I went, because I went 20 years ago. So um, tuition now is $11,000, but when you live on campus, if you're gonna live in Athens and stay there, it's gonna be 23,000, okay? Clayton State is one of our smaller state schools. It's in Marlboro, Georgia. Um, they have a great dental hygiene program for any of you that want to do dental hygiene and nursing. Um, their tuition is 6200 but with the tuition in the room and board is 20000 However, if you are can commute you know, to some of these schools, you, know, you may want to stay at home for a couple of years. My parents feel about that, but still, you know, to save money, 
colleges will allow you, for most colleges will allow you to, if you stay close enough to stay at home, and that would kind of cut down on your housing. The mom shaking her head, uh-uh, she got fucked up. <laughs> so just a thought, just a thought. Okay, um, Spelman, which is a, one of our all-female um, HBCUs here locally in Metro Atlanta, they are a private school, um, uh, and they're 22,000. Full 37,000. Now, Georgia Perimeter College is a two year school. Um, a lot of my students will go to, we have one locally in Newton County, Covington. If finances is an issue, then a lot of them will go to the two year first because the first two years of college students are pretty much your core classes. You're taking English, math, science, and social studies. Kind of like super high school, okay? So you're learning about life in the process, but those first two years, you're really not getting to your major. Matter of fact, you don't have to declare a major until the very end of your sophomore year. Once you get a junior, then that's when you'll stay and start taking your major courses. So a lot of my students will go one or two years to a two-year school like Georgia Perimeter. It's economical. And then they'll transfer to a bigger four-year school. And a lot, um, but yeah, and a lot of schools do tag. Georgia Perimeter not only tag at Georgia State, but they also tag at Georgia Tech. Georgia Southern, at Austin State. So they have a program where as long as you maintain a pretty good GPA, you can transition to that four-year school. So it also helps students who don't test well because smaller schools like two-year schools don't necessarily have a requirement, a higher requirement for SAT and ACT scores. So you know if you have a great student academically who is not a great test taker, then that may be an option because when they get ready to transition to the four-year school, they don't have to retake the SAT or ACT. They have proven that they can do college level work, okay? But they've been in college for two years. As long as they have a good enough grade, they can move right on to the four-year school, okay? I want you to look at the more scholarships. scholarships and the links to the scholarship. So what we're going to do is we have, what we're going to do is we're going to put on our website the breakdown of each scholarship. So it was, it's a large package, it's about 13 pages, so we didn't want to give you 13 pages. So um, if you want to know more information, this has the same thing that you have, you just have the link to the scholarship, but this one has what discipline the scholarship is in, like let's say it's for chemistry students. It also has the amount of the scholarship, and it also lists what the eligibility requirements for each scholarship, okay? Okay. So definitely look at that. Some that I want you guys to really pay attention to is um, put a star by, let's see, I want you to put a star by the Coca-Cola scholarship. I want you to put a star by the ones that have big money. Okay. Um, for my athletes, I want you to star the Foot Locker scholarship and the Wendy's High Center. Now the Wendy's, is Wendy's even on here? I don't see it on here. Okay, well athletes just write it down. The Wendy's High Center Award is for an athlete who play several sports though, not just one sport, you have to do at least two or more sports. But Foot Locker is on there and that's for athletes. Um, I want you to put a star by the Google 11th grade year is the year that it counts for scholarships, okay? So I don't know how they do it in the different counties. I know in my county you do have to pay to take the PSAT as the 11th grader. However, they do have waivers. So any student in here, if you have free or reduced lunch, in your 11th grade year, you ask your counselor for a PSAT waiver and they will pay for the test. Also, when you at the end of your 11th grade year, I want you to take the ACT and the SAT, okay? Ask for a waiver, you don't have to pay for it. You can get two free opportunities to take the SAT and two free opportunities to take the, SAT, um, the ACT. Two ACT, two SAT, okay? So keep that in mind if you have free or reduced lunch, or if you're in foster care, or if you're in upper bound, okay? All those students are eligible for free two tests each, okay? 
In addition to that, they also will give you waivers to pay for your college applications. So when you apply for college, there's an application fee attached to that, okay? Ask your counselor for the application waivers. If you take the SAT now, you will see on your account that they will give you four waivers for free. Now, all universities don't take waivers, but most do, okay? So all the state schools in the state of Georgia will take a waiver. All right. And most of the public schools as well. I mean, private and public. Okay, so 11th graders take that PSAT. If you do well on that PSAT, you are eligible for two scholarships, the National Merit Scholarship and the National Achievement Scholarship. National Achievement Scholarships are for African-American students. National Merit Scholarships are eligible for all students that are eligible. They, it is for the top score in, a, in your state. So the top scores on the PSAT during your 11th grade year in the state of Georgia, if you're in that top 95th percentile, your counselor will let you know if you are. They're going to mail you something to let you know. You were the mom, your PSAT scores, all of that, okay? So you'll be eligible to be a semifinalist, and then you can apply to be a finalist, and that will also pay for your tuition at any school, okay? All right, take college visits in the spring. You're on spring break, you have nothing to do. Go on a college visit. I know some of the local sororities and fraternities do college tours. So definitely look into that. We do one, so. Um, but uh, yeah. Or go on your own. If you're going on a family vacation in Florida and you know that you have some Florida schools you're interested in, stop by a few of those. Um, typically, when you go on the college website, it will say visit. Click on visit. All colleges will give visit tours. Um, give visit, what am I trying to say? We'll give tours, okay? And throughout the week or on the weekends. So all you have to do is just go to the website and see when they're touring. But definitely look. And what you want to do, oh, also Girls and Boys State, if you've never heard of that, ask your counselors about it. It is for 11th grade students. It's just a great opportunity for leadership. Um, a lot of students that want to run for president of the SGA or vice president of the SGA will go to Girls and Boys State. Um, they have moved Boys State, but it used to be at Georgia Southern University. It's a week. Girl stays at Georgia Southern for a week. And you are the students from all over the state of Georgia. And you just learn a lot. You get to meet cool people. And you go back to your high school and you're a leader. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so ask about that. And 11th graders, ask your counselor about the POSSE scholarship. Okay, so 12th graders, apply for scholarships. All right, so I already mentioned these, the heavy hitters. Um, these are the ones that's got some pretty good scholarship money. These are national scholarships. Now, the thing about national scholarships, you are competing against students all over the United States. So yes, it's hard to get it, but you know what? Have confidence, you're the bomb. Fill out these applications, get that money, okay? All right, so I mentioned these. Um, I'm gonna go into depth about some of these. Um, Horatio Alger is a $20,000 scholarship. They give you $5,000 a year for four years. There is the income requirement to that. The website is on your page, or on your packet. QuestBridge is kind of a scholarship program that is only attached to certain colleges. Um, and this presentation is also going to be on our website. Um, so if you don't write it down, it's okay. Ron Brown, for those seniors, the application, uh, they have two deadlines. One deadline is November 1st. The second deadline is January 1st. So I know you're not going to be able to do this packet in one day. So. Look at the January 1st deadline if you're interested. Um, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty simple application. They pay pretty good. Coca-Cola also has good money. Um, Posse, I'm gonna come back in case. USDA, now, we're here at Arabian Mountain. I don't know how many students are attending Arabian Mountain, but I know that I think their magnet program is in agriculture, right? They have an Arabian Mountain students here. Agriculture and Engineering, okay. The USDA Land Grant Scholarship is one of the only scholarships besides Gates that I know of that will pay for everything. They will pay for your housing, they'll pay for your food, they will pay for your tuition, your books, they'll give you a stipend, and then when you graduate, they give you a job. How about that? Okay, amen? All right, so how do you get that scholarship? Okay, well, you're gonna go on the website, you're gonna look at the details. Now, there's a catch. You can only go to a certain list of schools. So those schools that are strong in agriculture, FAMU, TSU, um, Tuskegee, 
All those schools have really strong uh, either vet programs or animal science programs. You also have to major in animal science, botany, agriculture, agriculture engineering, wildlife science, anything that has to do with agriculture or plant life or animal science, okay? The USDA, um, those are the people who, this is the United States Department of Agriculture. Those are the people that stamp with meat. That's what they're known for, the people that stamp on your meat. So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, it's a great scholarship. So there are certain schools you do have to go to, but there's a list of schools. There are about 15 schools. And then also you do have to major in that particular area. But I think it's a great scholarship. All right. Okay, possible. Posse, you have to be nominated your 11th grade year. Go to your counselors when you get back to school on Monday and ask them, are we a posse school? Because you have to be a posse school and have a posse counselor nominate you to be in posse. What is posse? Okay. So posse pays for all your tuition to six different schools. So a lot of my students have never heard of these schools before, so they're like, eh, you know. George Washington University is in Washington, D.C. You have Bard College in New York, Boston, I'm sorry, in Boston, Boston University, which is also in Boston, Brandeis, which is in New York, Worcester, College of Worcester in Ohio, or Texas A&M, which is in Texas. Okay, so Posse scholarship has been going on for 20 years, all right? Atlanta has participated in Posse for about eight years. So there's Posse Atlanta, Posse Los Angeles, Posse Houston, Posse New York. So they have all these different cities under this one organization. Posse came about where there was a young man, very intelligent, bright young gentleman. He went to college, at the end of freshman year, he just dropped out of school. And so someone asked him, why did you drop out of school? And he was like, well, I went to school in another state. None of my friends were there. I mean, if I had my Posse with me, I would've, I would've thrived. So that's where the name of the scholarship came from. So what they do is they start out with thousands of kids in each city. So this started at the end of the junior year. Each guidance counselor can nominate 15 11th graders, okay? So when I pull my 11th graders in and talk to them, I may have about 50 11th graders. I'll get my top students in the 11th grade class. I ask teachers to nominate our ROTC battalion commanders our SGA officers for the following school year. All students that have leadership, because that's what the scholarship is about, leadership, okay? So, when I meet with these kids, I ask them, are you willing to go out of state? And then I meet with their parents, and I say, are you willing to let your child go out of state? Because that's important. <laughs> Some of you know your ch children. You, you don't want to let them go, or you feel like they're not going to be okay far, far away. I get that. So that's not a scholarship for you. It's okay. However, if you're willing to get going, then Posse might be for you, okay? So these are the colleges for students in Atlanta. A, a Morehouse College is a Posse school, but they are a Posse school for someone in California. So the point is to get students to go away, okay? Get out of Georgia, see the world, okay? So, <laughs> so from those thousands of students that apply, it is a very rigorous interview process. So they may interview 100 students at a time. These students, are, they tell them, walk like a chicken. Uh, draw this picture. You know, they're doing crazy stuff. But throughout the process, they have observers in that room of 100 students looking to see who's the leader. And they're picking them out. That's the first round interview. The second round interview is an interview with a panel of two to three people. And the student kind of can choose out of those six schools, what's their top two schools? OK, so I might want to go to Texas a and in Boston. Um, and so someone representative will come and interview me. And at that time, they get to know who I am individually. I'll tell them all my clubs and activities I participate in, all my community service I have, what I want to do when I grow up, you know, and kind of give them an idea of what my dreams are. From there, the university looks at me and says, you know what, I think she'd be a great fit for my college. And then they have third round interviews. So my students just found out, I, don't know, I actually had 17 students to go. I nominated 15. And Posse, I had a Posse winner last year, she could nominate two. So I had 17 from my school. From that 17, we had five finalists. So from that, what they do is each college chooses 25 kids to interview. From those 25 students, they choose 10 students. So in December, they go to the Fox Theater and they announce to those 10 students they have a full tuition scholarship. So in December, at Christmas time, 
They don't have no words. They don't have to plot no more. All they have to do is fill out their fast in January. And actually, the colleges will give them grant money and scholarship opportunities to pay for the housing and the food. So my student went to Texas A&M with no expenses at all. Okay? So that's Posse. Look it up. Okay, now, Gabe. All right, that's what everybody want to know about. All right, so what's Gates all about? All right, so in 1999, Bill and Melinda Gates, you know them from Microsoft, they're the computer gurus. Um, they gave $1.6 billion for scholarships. So each year they award 1,000 scholarships to students across the United States. And this is the 20th year that they have done this. Now they said they were only going to do it for 20 years, but they had re-ups the money, so. Thank you, Bill Gates. All right. So um, anyway, so what is the process? Um, there is a GPA requirement, um, and you can use it for a bachelor's degree, but you can also use it, well, you can major in anything and get your bachelor's, but you can also use it beyond that if you major in certain areas. So if you're interested in engineering, education, computer science, math, library science, public health, any kind of research. They will also pay for your master's degree, your doctorate degree, okay? You can use this money up to $500,000, all right? I have a student, I don't think she came back this year, but she usually will come back and talk. She um, got the gates. She became a teacher. She taught at Rockdale High School for two or three years, and now she's working on her doctorate degree at Georgia State, and Gates is still giving her money, okay? And she has other scholarships as well on top of Gates. Okay, but Gates basically pays for unmet need. So what does that mean? Unmet need means if your student has hope and they go to UGA, UGA is going to take hope off the top. Okay, remember that twenty three thousand dollars it took to go to hope uh, to go to UGA. So hope will pay for eighty five percent of that tuition. I think tuition was eleven thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. So that's eight thousand dollars gone. So you got two thousand plus your. $11,000 for your housing and your food or whatever. Let's say you get a Delta City Data Scholarship for $500. That pays for your books, okay? So then let's say you get a, um, a Snap and Show Scholarship for $2,000, okay? So that takes off $2,000. Okay, so let's say you have about $8,000 or $9,000 left. Gates will cover that, okay? Because that's a net. And you probably don't get paid rent too, so it's like five dollars So yeah, whatever your grants and your scholarships, other scholarships don't pay for, um, Gates will take care of that. So how can you get gays? You have to be a minority student. And some of my students say, well, one of my parents is white, one of my parents is African American. You're a minority student, okay? So um, you must be minority. You must be a legal citizen of the United States. So, citizen. Um, you do have to have a 3.3. Now, on their website, it says you have to have a 3.3, which is an 88. However, I have had 10 gay scholars in the last three years, and all of them have had 3.7 or better. Okay, so that's just a little information there. Not to say that they won't accept, it's just in my experience. Now, Tammy, where did Tammy go? Oh, she gone? Okay. Arabian Mountain has consistently gotten Gates all as well every year. And I have to ask her what the GPA is here. But just from my experience, student has to have about a, uh, averages around 3.7 or 93 average. Okay? And of course, you do have to have a lot of uh, community service and clubs and activities, which I'm sure everyone in here has. Um, as I mentioned, it is renewable. You do have to maintain your grades. Um, you can transfer to different schools. One of my students started out at George Washington University in DC. He's now currently a junior at Emory. Uh, so the money follows you. Um, and again, as I mentioned, you can't go to graduate schools if you major in certain areas. They have great opportunities for leadership development. Once you are a winner, um, you go to a summer session uh, in, right after your high school year, and um, you get to just meet all the gay students from your half of the country. They do, I think, one in DC, one in California. So it's very cool. So you get connections, and uh, one of my students, I have several students at Emory. Uh, one of my students is here in Georgia State. He's gonna talk to y'all in a minute. Um, but my students from Emory, I have uh, one senior, I think two juniors, uh, one sophomore, and a freshman. And all of the students at Emory University that have the gates from all the different schools all over the nation, 
have a little click or a little club, and I know UGA has the same thing. So you also have made connections with other scholars on your campus. And of course, this um, alumni relations is awesome. And once you become an alumni and you graduate from college, you mentor those students that come in. Okay. So there is the process. So what do you have to do to get the gates? You're going to go to GMSP, Gates Millennium Scholarship Program.org, go to the website, and you're going to start on the nine essays you have to write. All right. They're not just going to be $500,000 with an editor. You've got to work for it, OK? And these quest the questions that they have are two and three part questions, and they are really trying to get to know your student. They're really trying to get to know you because there is no interview. There's an interview on paper, OK? So they want to know that you have a financial need. They got to know that once they give you this money, you're going to go back after you graduate from college and give back to your community, going to pay it forward. And they want to make sure that you know, you're know you going to do great things. And I know all of you are, OK? So what do you have to do? You write your nine essays. You have a nominator. Typically, the nominator is your guidance counselor. Um, because we have, they ask us three questions. They ask us what type of student you were in high school. They ask about the rigor of your classes, like did the student take seven AP classes in their senior year. Um, and they also want to ask, why does the student need the money? So I have to do personal interviews with my kids because I don't know the background on each one of my children. So you have to be very transparent. You have to be willing to Put it out there. You can't be scared to tell your story, okay? Because I need to know that, and the Gates people need to know that. So if you have, and, and some students say, well, I haven't been homeless. I haven't, um, I don't have a sibling that's disabled. I, I don't, I haven't gone through anything. Well, you've gone through something. Just marinate and think on it. <laughs> you've been through something, you know, and, and you have a financial need. That's something, you know? So, you might have siblings, like my student here, he's a twin. So, you know, his mom's got twins in college and his sister is a senior this year. So, you know, that's a lot of students in college at the same time. Um, so it, it could be anything. It could be a variety of different things going on. But just tell your story. That's what you want to do. Make sure that you get your English teachers to review your essays. And um, when Brandon comes up here, I have a, a, my other Gates students they are willing to, I'm going to give you their email addresses. You, they are willing to read your essays, OK? So and I have several other students and teachers and sorors that will read your essays if you need help, OK? Um, so you're going to have a nominator, which is your guidance counselor. Or it can be any educator group. They, you really need to be a counselor, because your counselor has access to your transcript and can really analyze the courses that you take. The second person you need is a recommender. Now. I had one student that, that is a Gates scholar now, he's at Georgia Tech. He had asked his neighbor to write, be his recommender. His neighbor was an engineer, he wants to be an engineer. His neighbor was a great guy and had known him his whole life, house and ever. He was not a very verbal person. So therefore, his recommendation form was very, they asked you five questions, he had like a sentence or two for each question. That's unacceptable. I need someone who's going to write, write, write about a lot of stuff. So I recommend your English teacher or a teacher that, or maybe a social studies teacher, someone who writes. And someone who knows you very well is going to say great things about you, OK? Because they're going to ask questions about, is this student, um, you know, what type of community service does this student have? Or, you know, what type of leadership does this student have? So you do have to have some kind of conversation with the recommender as well to kind of get to know you, to write the recommendation. And all of this is online, OK? Um, and then, of course, your student application. It's a pretty user-friendly application. You're putting your demographic information on there, your grades, your activities, kind of like your resume. And then you just have to write these nine essays, and that's it. Um, so you submit it. And it is due in 2016 on a wonderful day. January 13th, yes, it's special to me. OK. So that's what it's due. And I tell students don't wait till last minute. And tell your nominator and recommender don't wait till last minute, because y'all remember some Hurricane Sandy? Remember when that happened? 
Okay, they had a lot of power outages. New York Gates didn't care because this application was already online. They didn't care that the power was out when it was due. You see what I'm saying? Snowstorm, all that. So, you had a question? This is for seniors now. Yes, this is for current seniors. And yes, yes, ma'am. So this is and, and then ninth, tenth, eleventh graders. The essay questions are the same every year. So you can go ahead and look at the questions and start on your essays. But twelfth graders, yeah, they only apply to senior or freshman in college. I'm gonna let Brandon come up and talk. Gosh, you're a sophomore. Can't believe it. And he's at Georgia State, and he's going to tell you about his process. And if you have questions, you can ask him, and then I'll come back and you can ask questions. Okay. All right, I'm Brandon Hayden. I go to Georgia State University. I got dates in 2014, so two years ago, well, about to be two years ago. So first, I want to start and thank Dr. Brickfield because she's an awesome counselor. If she wasn't there, I'm pretty sure nobody in school would get it because nobody would know about it. Um, okay, so when it comes to nominator, you do have to choose someone in your in your school who you like show leadership in their class. I chose my Spanish teacher. I enjoy Spanish. In that class, I was very vocal. I raised my hand. I answered questions. Sometimes not correctly, but that's okay. Um, as long as they see that you're trying to be someone and trying to like put an effort out to not let what other people think of you and stuff like that bring you down. <coughs> Uh, like stuff like that, then they'll know you're a leader. And they say, I wrote some stuff down. Uh, my recommender was Dr. Brakefield because she's an awesome counselor. Like she said, it was me and my brother both trying to go to school, and my mom was already in school as well. So I've been three college students, and now my sister's about to graduate too, to go to school. She's applying for it. So we're pushing for her to get it as well because that is a lot of money. When she showed the cost of attendance for college, it's real. Like, they might look like numbers, they might just feel like, oh, whatever. No, they were real numbers, and I know this year, I was just like, dang, college is super expensive. It costs $4,000 to live on campus at Georgia State. That's like paying $1,000 a month to be there from August to December. That is extremely high. When you go out and look for apartments in Atlanta, the most you'll pay for four bedroom is seven fifty dollars at the max if you're not going to some super expensive place to live. So it's ridiculous at college. Um, let's see, what else? One thing I want to show you guys is that you don't have to be intelligent to be a leader. You don't have to be number one, number two, not even number five. I was number 13. You just have to know who you are, do what you want to do, and don't let what other people think about you like, stop you from doing what you want to do, because that's what a leader is. A leader's not super smart. A leader's not top of their class. Well, they can be, but you don't have to be top of your class to be a leader. Uh, when it comes to writing those essays, there's nine essays. I think you only have to write nine, though, if you're not, um, if you're not having already graduated yet. So what I did, has anybody even started on essays? If you haven't, raise your hand. All right, so you guys are way better than me because I didn't start until December. Yeah, and the application was due January 14th. So I was kind of behind because I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do Gates Morning Scholarship or not. And it wasn't just because I wasn't sure. It was because I was being lazy. So my advice to you is don't be lazy. Always think about the scholarship 24-7, like even if you're not writing, think about instances in your head that you can use for the different scholarships. I know when I wasn't writing, because I had to go, like I had work too and school, I would think about, okay, I can use this for a scholarship. Let me think about what really happened so I can actually write it out. Because when you write your scholarships, you want to do more than just, oh, this is what happened. You want to tell a story, kind of think of it as a memory. You don't want to like spice it up big time because that can be lying, but um, definitely write it out as if you're telling not just your friend, but somebody like your principal or something like that. You want to use not big words, but you want to use, make sure you sound professional enough, but actually telling your story. And let's see, what else did I do? After that, I made a promise to myself around December to start getting more serious about the essays because I wanted to go to college without any student loans. My mom, as I told you, she's doing her doctorate right now, and she literally is at like the max for student loans. And that is a lot of money, and it can cause a lot of stress. So I wanted not to have that kind of stress, and Gates was the option for me. So I went to, I think it was Kroger. It was Kroger's right by my job. 
I went to Kroger, and you guys know how five-star notebooks are super expensive. So I went there, bought like a $10 notebook, and I said, if I'm gonna invest this money, I need to really try to get the scholarship. So from that day on, I think it's like December 3rd or something, I just dedicated my time to either thinking about the essays or writing the essays. And once you sit down and actually start to write, since you're talking about yourself, it won't be that hard. Sometimes you gotta get people to review it, look over it, okay, try this, try that. That's what we're here for, because we already got it. I know Alex Grady is really good at that. So if you get his email, email him first. Because he is the bomb at it, and I'm not so good at it, but he is really, really good at it. Um, let's see what else I have. Okay, when it comes to community service, I did most of my community service in ninth and 10th grade, because I got my job in 11th grade, so it kind of took away time from doing community service. So the ninth graders and 10th graders in here, even the 11th graders, start now. Go out and do things, because you can write about those things. After that, I did a little bit of community service here and there with this theater troupe I was in. It wasn't anything big, but you can still talk about it. If it seems small to you, it probably isn't small, because the essays are about you. And I know we went to perform this small little thing at a boys and girls club. And I used that for my sixth essay, I believe, about community service. And you just talk about what you taught those kids, or if you went to a homeless shelter, what you learned from that experience. And make sure that all of your essays, you're talking about something that made you stand out as a leader. Or leadership should be present in all eight or nine of your essays. Um, I think the first one is about what you're good at, what subject you're good at. The second essay is about what subject you're not good at. The subject you're not good at, don't be, I know most of you use math because not everybody is good at math. But don't be, don't be scared to let them know your weaknesses and how you plan to fix it. I know my weakness for gay essay number two was geography. And if you have a weakness that's not necessarily a subject, make it a subject. Because I use my weaknesses as not knowing directions. Like, I'm really bad at driving anywhere without GPS. I'm really bad at, literally, I can just go down the street to like a waffle house and I still need directions because I suck at that. So, I changed it to geography and I used a past instance where I mixed up Washington DC and Washington all the way over there by California. As an example, when we went on our eighth grade trip. So don't be scared to find a weakness and put it in somewhere that it fits. Uh, there's so much more I want to talk about, but I can't remember right now. Um, let's see. Financial need, yeah, because it's really expensive. Oh, okay. When you stand out, you stand out by speaking, raising your voice like this young lady right here when she answered Dr. Brakefield's question right here in the senior 16 shirt. That was leadership. Because she spoke up, even though she's in like a room of about 50 people maybe, she still, even though it's kind of a whisper, she still said, oh, it's this, this, and this. That's what leadership is. And also when I asked if she had her essay, like she saw it, she raised her hand as well. That's the kind of qualities you want to see in a leader. Though you don't have to have those, not to start until December, but as long as you're vocal about the things you do, you do the right things, now that doesn't mean, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to say this the right way. <laughs> Leaders have like a presence about themselves that's not, that's not like everybody else, but, but they're not walking around trying to be cool, you know, oh yeah, I didn't do that. Homework is stupid, yeah, that was stupid. That was just so hard, I didn't want to try. That's not the qualities of a leader. A leader is someone who does try, even when they really, really don't get it. My brother is awful at math. If he was here, he would tell you the same thing. He hates it, he hates it, he hates it. But what he doesn't do is let it defeat him. He tries, he tries, he tries. Though he gets super frustrated, he still tries. So as long as you're trying, you're being vocal about your disability. Like if you don't know, go to a teacher. When they see that you take the time out of your school schedule, maybe go to lunch and you go to them for help, that's also leadership qualities. Like I said, you don't have to be intelligent to be a leader. So if you guys have any questions, because I think that's all I want to talk about. When you were writing your essays, like, I know writing an essay, like, everyone's essay is going to look the same, but what did you do with your essay style that made it stand out? I think a lot of that comes with your personality. And writing an essay for the scholarship and writing an essay for class are two completely different things. When you write an essay for class, it's more informational, very structured, very professional. But when you write an essay for these scholarships, it's a lot more personable. You just write exactly what happened. You, I like to write, even though I hate writing.
writing. I do like to write, so I enjoy writing those essays, but you just have to know what happened, how you're going to frame it, and just kind of go from there. And your personality should make you stand out in the way you write. Did that kind of answer your question? Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the struggle was real for me because I didn't have a word on my computer. So I went straight to the application and typed on there. But I only had, I only had one essay that was 900 words. Every other essay from that ranged between 500 and 600. And we even had a recipient write like two paragraphs for an essay. So as long as you're getting your point across, I don't know if being that direct is the way to go. But as long as you're getting your point across, it doesn't matter how many words you have. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh, I want to say I watch your YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, for your recommendation, for the recommendation, mm -hmm. um, how long was, how long did they write? Like, we don't get to know that. I don't know if you get to know that. Yeah, the nominator is three questions. The recommender has five questions. Um, I know for me, my for the nominator, for the first two questions, we had 500 words. For the last question, which I thought was the most important question, is why does the student need the money? It was 100 words. So that's a lot. I always max that out. <laughs> I'm like, need more words to say why you need the money. So, um, but for the recommender, typically is between 250 and 500 words per question, and it's five questions. I know one that has to verify your leadership, one talks about community service, one talks about um, your characteristics or something that they saw in you, or if they were a teacher, um, you know, kind of talk about how you were as a student. So those are all the questions that the recommender has to answer. Okay. So, yeah. so that's why I was saying, kind of make sure someone who can write well. Okay, I have another one of my favorite kids. Let's give Brandon a hand. I'm going to to freshman at Emory, and he earned more than $1.5 million in scholarships by himself. So let's give him a hand. Okay, Brandon, <laughs> yeah, he applied to over 20 schools, and he got scholarships for most of them. So I'm going to talk. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff OCK. <coughs> So I came a little late, so I'm not exactly sure everything I went through, but I'm pretty sure I went through on the basis. So, okay, but um, I, I, I'm a freshman at Emory University this year. Um, like Dr. Berkeley said, uh, I did get offered like, one, uh, like over 1.2 mil in different scholarships, and I was like mainly for Gates, and then also for um, different other schools I applied to, like and offered me four rides and things like that. I applied to like around 20 two schools, I believe, and I got accepted into all of them besides like two. I think the two other seven schools was like tech and Princeton, but I didn't I was good. <laughs> as far as um, schools I got accepted into. Um, Gates, it was, um, as far as my process for applying to Gates, I started uh, like, um, as if you all were starting this summer, <clears throat> that just passed. So I started this summer and then I did, I probably did two essays by the end of the summer, and then I did the rest of them in like November, December, and like two weeks before the deadline, which isn't good at all. I wouldn't suggest anybody doing that. That's just procrastination. Um, but um, I know one of the biggest tips is to have people check your essays when it comes to gigs. Like, um, find different writers that you know. Uh, but your best resource will always be someone who has one gigs, because that's what I did. Um, I went to Alex Gray and we, uh, we, we, uh, we sat down for hours. We just went through every single one of my essays. And just, and um, they, like, we were helping make sure what they're looking for as far as gigs. So that's my biggest um, thing as far as that. Um, make sure you find a good recommender who actually has um, some type of knowledge when it comes to applying to gigs essays. Because I know some people who deserve to get it, they just have that recommended who was doing it. And um, since I was um, a new, like I'm, I'm, I'm very new to the Gates um, Foundation, um, so I went to the conference that they had in Virginia, and 
they said that like the reason like a lot of people won like this year was due to the nominations and like the recommenders and as far as how they were, uh, they said that that was like the deciding factor. So just know that that's like a big important chunk of your um, of applying to get you definitely make sure you have a, a good recommender. And then I know as far as GPA, um, if you think you don't have a high end GPA, don't, I mean, like, you should definitely still apply. Like, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get it at all. Um, I'm pretty sure I went through a lot of stuff that I probably want to say, so just from the questions, because I'm very new. Like, I, I, can tell you, it just, I just went through all this stuff. So, yeah, you got the questions. Uh, what did you get on your SAT or ACT? Yeah. So, ACT, I made 27. But that, like, I, I think it was like my fourth time taking it. Like, it, it, like, I, it, it took me real, like, it took me a long time to, like, get that ACT score. Cause I think I made like a 22, and then I made 22 again. Then I made like a 25, then I made 27. So it, it took a lot to do that. Um, for everybody, I don't, I mean like, um, for some people, uh, I suggest that you, you can take it multiple times and you can read you up, but eventually, like, it's going to get to a point where you just going to start to make a lower grade than it actually um, more. And SAT, uh, I didn't do good <coughs> on the SAT. As far as, like, an accumulated score, I think I made, like, a 1,500, maybe, which isn't, like, super high at all. Um, my ACT is the reason why I got to, like, a lot of schools I got to. Um, but uh, statistically speaking, I believe that um, people of color make higher grades with ACT than with SAT. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I am GPA. I have four point zero GPA throughout uh, high school, and take AP classes. Now, I did a twenty three on the ACT. I did a fifty seventy five on the SAT. So don't be like super stressed out about that. Yeah. Test scores, um, for gates, you shouldn't really stress out about test scores for gates. Any other questions? What is your major as well as program? Well, I'm a freshman, so I'm undecided right now. Um, I have, I, I have been having an interest like um, creative writing, I've been working on studies, jump away probably. Because Emory is number one for creative writing. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm just interested in so many things, like media, just, uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. Brandon, can you? Uh, I was kind of undecided too before I went to school. At first I thought I wanted to do marketing, but then I thought, no, that's not what I want to do, I'm not a business person. Then um, I wanted to do journalism, which is my minor right now. But I am a communication major, which is speech at Georgia State. And I majored in that just because I wanted to inspire other people to do what they want to do, be who they want to be, but work hard to get there. Because it's totally possible. You just have to put it in the work. So I'm a speech maker, enjoy saying. Did you also relate that in your essay that you guys were inspired by that you had an idea? Okay, so for essay number four, which is short and long-term goals, I think I chose, because I was very wishy-washy, I chose education. And I was going to be a high school, no, a college English professor. So that's what I wrote my essay about, even though things kind of change. So it's okay if you're not solid about what you want to be. Just kind of, if you have something, write that down in your area. Or if you're undecided, I believe you can write that too and make it a good story and also get a scholarship. Yeah, um, <clears throat> as far as like who I feel most sometimes when I love this, um, they, they only like really, um, like as far as like, as far as a graduate school, the money caters to different types of people. So I know uh, education, people go to grad school for education. Any STEM related field, um, yeah. Engineering, uh, gauge in graduate school, like they won't pay for like the next school the pre-law. So um, when I was doing um, my essay, uh, I kept that in mind. So I tried to uh, cater a little bit to 
like their interests are correct. So I think I, I, I think I did like double major in uh, on, on my essays. I think I did double major in like computer science and physics. I think I did what I could, and that's that um that's not necessarily what I want to do now. So just like I said. possible to double minor, I mean double major, triple major, I don't think is, is a thing, or it might be, I don't know, but yeah, you could double major, you could have one minor, you can major one thing and have a double minor as well, so, because once you add, because how it works, major classes, or for your major, is you need more credits before you graduate, minor classes are less credits before you graduate, so you have a double major, you're going to need to be in school for a little bit longer, and if you have a double minor, it's a little bit less, but you can still have to be in school for just a little bit longer. Yeah, typically, I mean, a lot of students are going to have a lot of different interests areas, so that's the whole point of going to college, trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. Um, it took me to the end of my senior year, but I had a double minor in UGA, so I was a psych major, started out pre-med, realized I was a Harvard science student, dropped pre-med, um, did a whole bunch of psychology classes, worked for the psych department, did internships in counseling site, uh, clinical site, I hated clinical. So I, I finally figured it out. But I minored in music and I minored in um, education. So that helped me because I actually did kind of merge that psych and education to go into counseling. So if you have three strong areas, I would definitely look into minor because just like in high school, you have to have elective classes. You also have to have a little class in college. So I would take definitely take a course in the three areas that you're interested in. And once you do that, you may be able to say, oh, okay, I really want to focus on this. So that would be my recommendation. Um, yeah, and I just want to thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you got some information that um, is valuable information. And at this time, I would like to introduce um, our Madam President, uh, Ms. Pamela Lee. Good morning. Okay, so did you get some good information here? Yes. Was it worth getting up on a Saturday morning for? Yes. So you ready to apply and get some scholarship money? Yes. Very good, very good. So what I wanted to say is um, we are very invested in helping you all secure this scholarship money. So I wanted to tell you a couple of things. First off, as was mentioned earlier, we also give out scholarship money. Now, we're not balling like the gates, so you're not gonna get thousands of dollars, but we do have scholarship money that we give out. So, um, on the packet here that you all have, um, our website address is on here, which is the smlacdst.org. So around the Thanksgiving time period, our scholarship application will be out there and available. So I encourage you to apply for our scholarship and we give those out uh, usually in the um, March, April, May time period. So definitely apply for our scholarship. And also, um, we are also happy to assist in reviewing 
any of the essays that you may write as well. So you can also uh, reach out to us at our scholarship email address, and I want to correct it because it's actually um, incorrect on your packet. It is actually scholarship at snlacdst.org. So again, that's scholarship at snlacdst.org. Um, we have a lot of counselors, educators in our chapter, so uh, we are happy to look over those essays for you as well, because the bottom line is, we want your organization scholarship money. We know your parents want your organization scholarship money. Your parents are like, yes. So um, the key is, it's a lot of money out there, but you're not going to get it unless you apply. So um, the worst that can happen is they say no, and you're no worse off than you were before you applied. So um, apply, and you can be like the young man over here who got $1.5 million offered to him in scholarship money. That would be a bad thing, would it? Okay, so you gotta apply. So if there's anything, um, like I said, that we can do to assist you, um, we are more than happy to do that. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming out, um, giving up a couple of hours of your Saturday morning for what I hope was um, a valuable opportunity for you to get some information. And I um, just want to say thank you and have a great rest of your weekend.